I'm going to get pitched out over. I'm going to get run over. I'll get killed. Roy Dunn Clark, who's doubling James Garner, who I worked with on, on Rockford Files a couple of times, he, he'll get crippled up. And Jill Stokesbury, who's doubling Jody Foster and the coach. And Tommy Glass, who's laying down blind driving, is going to get killed. And he just skimmed up. And then I got his head up. And I didn't realize at the time that the left leader was falling down, too. Welcome to A Word on Westerns. Today we are fortunate to have one of the great stuntmen, an Academy Award winning stuntman for creating Mick's rig. His name is Mick Rogers. Have a seat, Sure. So are we having fun today? Yeah. All right. This is good. Glad you're here. Mick has done a ton of stuff. But what I want to talk about first is Maverick, yeah. the Maverick feature film with James Garner and Mel Gibson. Uh, Dick Donner directed that. Yeah, it couldn't get better. Yeah, really. Yeah, that was a, a big Western. Then not only that, you had a lot of people do cameos in it as well. They had a lot of great uh, uh, old, uh, older actors from like a lot of the series stuff. And it was really, it was really an experience. Yeah. It was um, kind of the high water mark of my son career. Well, you did a tribute to Yakima Kanat in that, didn't you? Basically, yeah. We did the uh, uh, stagecoach transfer where we jumped down the line uh, from the coach to the wheel team to the swing team to the leaders and did that stunt. And uh, it was big. It was really yeah, exciting. No, uh, and For a lot of different reasons, too. Like what? Well, at the time, uh, I always wanted to work on a Western. Maverick was one of my favorite uh, TV shows. And... Uh, I got a chance to to do it's it's a classic movie stunt. It's 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 pure. There's no trickery about it. Mm -hmm. You either do it or you or it goes really bad. And uh, it, it's just a great thing. And at the time, uh, we were fortunate enough to get uh, Terry Leonard, who was one of my idols as a stuntman and stunt coordinator and second unit director, who I'd worked for before on Big Wednesday, in 1941, and uh, he was directing second unit, and he had started to do that stunt for uh, The Legend of the Lone Ranger, mm -hmm. the, the remake, and uh, got run over, basically. I've seen that near, footage. Near lost, uh, yeah, he, he was a wreck. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and uh, so he never completed it. And uh, to, to do it in front of him was, was a big thrill for me. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it, it almost went badly, too. So <laughs> this is a lot of it. Well... I don't know how it could be safer when you do it today versus when Yak did it. No, it's there's, there's just, no getting around yeah, it. Those yeah. horses are flying. I, I, we did everything that we had to do. Uh, Rudy Uglin was the, uh, the wrangler. He asked me who I wanted to drive the coach, and I told him I wanted uh, Tommy Glass from Canada, who's a three-time world champion chuck wagon racer and stuntman. It was a six-up, too. Right? It was a six-up, yeah. yeah. And... Uh, I had experience at it because I, I started in the stunt. My first real stunt job was a, I was a gunfighter at Knott's Berry Farm. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, Did you eat the chicken there? The chicken's great. Oh, yeah, yeah, the chicken was great. But uh, we would have to rob the stagecoach once in a while. And, and so, you know, just not wanting to walk all the way down to that, that spot, we would ride on the stagecoach. And I'd start to, like, you know, in the, early in the morning, the, 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 the stagecoach guys would have to make loops according to a schedule. And there wouldn't be anybody in the coach. And so I, I asked, you know, they were just, you know, we're all young guys. And it's like, hey, do you mind if I just jump down on the, on the tongue? And they're like, yeah, go ahead. You know, they didn't care. And I would practice, like, dragging underneath the coach and climbing all over it. And doing you stuff. nutty kid. Yeah, it was fun. And, uh, and uh, eventually they, they taught me how to drive. I can drive a six up. Mm -hmm. not, I'm not a great uh, teamster by any means, but I can get one done. And, and uh, so I had a lot of experience already and, you know, was when this came up, uh, it was just like I was going to, you know, I was in heaven, basically. Yeah. And so we, we trained the horses up, up in Lone Pine, and then we, did, we shot that sequence in uh, Page, Arizona. And I, I got to tell you, when you finally go to do it, because you don't want to, like, wear the teams out or anything, but when you finally get them running at a dead run, and we were at a dead run, and uh, there's a lot of air down there. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> Wow. 
This, this is, how do you really practice a sequence like that? I, I, I basically spent most of my uh, three or four weeks uh, ahead of time uh, just hanging from bars and just, you know, getting hand strength. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, you just want to, you, you build your, you got your ironing board on the tongue and, and, and uh, basically just get them running as hard as they can run. Because then they go straight. They go straight and uh, straighter. Uh, was there a moment while you were doing this where you just felt, oh, God. It's oh, yeah, yeah, no. Uh, jumping from the coach to the wheel team was good. And then getting a foot up into your spreader bar and then hanging on the Haynes and then making the transfer to the, the wheel team, I mean, the swing team. And, and that's good. And uh, when we finally made did the jump to the, the leaders, I, I was excited. I mean, I was pumped. I was in good shape. And, you know, I was 40 at the time, you know, and it, which is kind of past your prime as a stunt guy. But, I mean, I wanted to do it. And, and, yeah. uh, and uh, I made the leap. And... Uh, I hit him a little too far. I mean, I hit him up by their shoulders and tried to land as soft as I could, but we kind of banged into him a little bit. And the right leader fell in the dirt. He started going down. It's in the film. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I, I, you know, I'm picking up on his, his neck and trying to get his nose out of the dirt. And I saw the tongue skim the ground. Oh. And in my mind, in slow motion, I'm thinking, oh, this is going to be wild because what a shot this is going to be <laughs> i'm going to get pitched out over i'm going to get run over i'll get killed you know uh roy dunn clark who's doubling james garner who i worked with on, on rockford files a couple times he, he'll get crippled up and joe stokes barrett who's doubling jody foster and the coach and tommy glass who's laying down blind driving is going to get killed we're all going to get mocked and, uh, and uh and it just skimmed up, and then I got his head up, and I didn't realize at the time that the left leader was falling down, too. Mm. They were both trying to go hit the dirt, and Tommy Glass was so smart, he just called for more speed. He was running up mm -hmm. to push him back up. Mm -hmm. And when we got done and got him stopped, and I got off, and I started walking over to the uh, insert car that they were filming from, and Terry Leonard was, you know, directing, and he's looking at me, and he goes, uh, you, you know Goddamn kid, you know how close you came to getting killed? Uh, I go, yeah. He goes, God damn, that was great. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> he, just, he was so happy. It is great. It is great. So it is great. Wow. That's, that's what, well, then Dick Donner directed that. How did you first meet him? Was it on Lethal Weapon? Lethal Weapon, yeah. So, yeah, I guess. And you were, this is interesting because Mick, he was doubling Mel Gibson on Lethal Weapon 1. A lot of great action. On Lethal Weapon 2, Lethal Weapon Three and Lethal Weapon Four, Man, you were right. stunt coordinator on yeah. those three. Yeah, so on, on the last three, they must have liked what you did on that. They first did. One. Yeah, so. no, it all good. I mean, I did uh, Braveheart. I shot all the second, you know, yeah. battle stuff. And there's some of the greatest action scenes ever, and the best best film of the year too. Yeah, the Oscar well, film. Braveheart was cool because I, I was Mel Gibson's stunt double. I was a stunt coordinator, and I directed second unit. And and one day I I cooked lunch for the crew. <laughs> so yeah. what was uh, left for Mel to do as the director? He had a lot to uh, do. He, he, he had a lot of dialogue scenes yeah. to direct, right? We just finished a picture that he, he directed uh, in Australia called uh, Hacksaw Ridge. And that's a true story, It's right? a true story. It's a battle picture about Okinawa. And, uh, Andrew Garfield mm -hmm. plays a guy named Desmond Doss, who is the only conscientious, conscientious objector in World War II that won a Congressional Medal of Honor. Mm -hmm. The first real conscience objector would be uh, Lou Ayers, Sergeant York. Oh, Sergeant York, World War I. But he actually didn't, you know, he actually mm -hmm. picked up a gun. Desmond Doss never touched the weapon. Mm -hmm. He just saved like 75 guys up on Hacksaw Ridge in Okinawa. I think Mel is one of the greatest he is, action is directors ever. So is Dick Donner. It's, 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 it's lucky, I think, uh, it's, a, it's one of those perfect matches yeah. that uh, people don't know enough about. Uh, Apocalypto, for me, is it's a western it is and it's a great movie that is just non -stop. it was a, that was a fun movie it was hard because uh, the entire crew spoke spanish and or mayan and there's only like three of us that spoke english <laughs> and so there's a lot of translating going on and trying to get guys in line classes you know to do stuff and be safe it was good with mel as the director and the producer how did he resolve budgetary problems with what he needed as a director. There was a, uh, this is how it went. There was a point where uh, 
the producer, who, the actual line producer, I was talking to Mel about some sequence, and he walks up to him, and this is about three weeks before we're about to finish, and we've been shooting a long time. He goes, Mel, you, you cannot go back and shoot this. He would reshoot scenes because he wasn't satisfied. He goes, you just can't. You can't afford it. And Mel goes, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Just, let, me, let me talk to the money guy. And he turned around and he walked about two feet away, <laughs> talking to no one, and then turned around, walked back to him and said, he says it's okay. <laughs> that's what we did. Because he was shooting his own money. And, yeah. well, you know, that's he, such a great film. And when he was doing it, Everybody said, is he crazy? He's doing this film. There, there's no head. leads. There's nobody speaking English. It's like a, a, a silent movie. And then who's going to go? And it was huge. It was fun because uh, he would just come up with stuff. And, uh, and he'd let me run. And he'd go, go, you shoot all the chase sequence. Shoot, take Jaguar Paw and take the guys and shoot the taper. And like, I don't want to fire out a taper. You know? You know, and, and, oh, and get me a shot of the guy's head. His POV is like bouncing down the stairs. <laughs> I'm like, but he'd be dead. He goes, I don't care. Just get the shot of the guy's POV of his head. You know, from his point of view. Okay, so I was like, you know, so you, you, you end up sticking a camera inside of a basketball. And basically, just toss it down the stairs. Yeah, it is a wild. It's picture. a wild picture. It's, it's, it's really, and it's a great Western. Yeah. Basically. And then you can watch it over and over again. Yeah. It's one of those that. It pops up on, on TV, and you just sit down and you keep watching it. Yeah. It's, uh, it's a magic. He's, he, he's a great guy. He's a really good athlete. I mean, he, he does every stunt. And we, we break it down in situations that he can handle mm -hmm. you know, so we don't kill him. But he, <laughs> I, I, I brutalized him a lot, you know, just put him through the paces. On Maverick, you know, he's dragging underneath the stagecoach. we got to get that. So basically, go, how do we do that? So I was like, I just basically built a... a a little plywood board for him to lay on, and, and we drug it underneath the, the coach. And he just works his way back, and he's a smart guy. Mm -hmm. So we're setting all this up, and it was a day that, at the time, Terry Semmel and Bob, and, and Bob Daly were the heads of Warner Brothers, were there. And his agent, uh, Ed Lamato, mm -hmm. and uh, Lauren Schuler Donner, Dick's, Dick's wife and producer, were there. And there's like, Six or seven of the top people of the 25 in Hollywood are there on the camera car watching this $20 million dollar actor, you know, like <laughs> you're going to drag underneath the coach. And, and, and we're using the team because we want the, the dirt and everything. So it's, it's not just the, like the truck or anything. And uh, so I'm getting them all set up and I get all the things and I'm hanging on the harness on the backside of the coach so I can kind of talk him through it and keep an eye on him. And I just get ready. Okay, we're ready to shoot. Okay, we're on. And Jody Foster, so who's there, and she's a really nice person and everything. And really good poker player, by the way. Uh -huh. And I'm a bad one, so she, <laughs> she liked me coming to poker games because I'd lose. And uh, she goes, Dick, I don't think this is safe. And all of a sudden, Donner <laughs> freaks out. And, and for the first five years of my career with him, you know, he, he, he wouldn't call me by my name. He'd, he'd forget my name. I was Rocky or Kid. Rocky, Kid, Kid, Rocky, come here, come here, come here. Get unhooked and they're going to run around. And I, I'm looking at all these people and they're all just, you know, is it safe? I go, yeah, it's, it's safe. You know, this is what we're going to do. And, and you know, we got to get the shot. He goes, well, make it safe. I go, okay. Hey, Mel. He goes, yeah. He's laying on the dirt. He goes, yeah. Don't put your foot in the wheel. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I mean, Same. there's nothing you can do. I yeah. mean, it, it's an action sequence that, that's <laughs> pure that has to be done a certain way. So he's pretty handy. He's very handy. And then when we put him on in between the horses for those cuts, mm -hmm. uh, Donner's like, well, how are you going to make this safe? I go, he's got to just, you know, well, put him in a harness. I go, oh, so then he could slip on his feet and then do a Cossack drag between his things and can't get away? No. Oh. What if you run the harness down to his feet? Well, and then he can like lose his balance and fall backwards and do a Cossack drag between the horses and get killed? No. <laughs> he's good. Leave him alone. He's good. I mean, we've jumped him off of buildings. We've lit him on fire. And we've done a bunch of smart things. He's okay. <laughs> well, uh, you know, Dick Donner started on TV doing episodics, and yeah. he did quite a few westerns as well. But you also worked with uh, a dynamic director, Quentin Tarantino, and yeah. Django Unchained. Yeah. 
What was that experience like? That was good. I, 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 you know, we were up at Lone Pine, and uh, it was night. It was cold. It was snowing, and uh, he shoots with one camera. He, he, he isn't, you know, he shoots. And film. he shoots film. He shoots film. Yeah. And he's, 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 uh, he's a smart guy. He's really kind of funny, but he's like laser focused to what he's doing. Mm -hmm. And uh, and uh, it's fun because he shoots a lot of everything's bloody. You know. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> well, Mel too. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, no. no. He's, I've seen pictures cookies. of Mick where he's doubling Mel, and it's just so much blood caked on him that it it looks like it could be Mel, but yeah. it's you. No, there's there's shots in like the first lethal weapon where he comes out after he's been tortured and, and he, he breaks free and he's running down uh, Sunset Boulevard like right at camera and jumps up over a car and it, that's me. I mean, and it's a it's a three quarter shot and. No one ever picks mm -hmm. up on it, you know. And I don't think I look that much like him, but you get the clothes and you get the stuff. Mm -hmm. You're okay. Yeah, well, it, it's working. And I want to thank you for being here and sharing I your stories, too. It's, yeah. uh, it's so nice. I always think the stuntmen have the best stories. Yeah. 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 Well, it's, just, it's fun because uh, hearing, like, Buddy Van Horn today, and he's a big fan. I'm a big fan of his. Well, and, I, and I tell you, the people who come and share their stories with us, they love Westerns or they wouldn't be here. And you mentioned Maverick is one of your favorites. Yeah. Was that your favorite Western growing up? Uh, it's one of my favorite series. Uh, Wanted Dead or Alive was another mm -hmm. one. I had, I had that. That outfit, you know, the hat oh, and the gun. Oh, right, and, and the gun. We have a guy here who wears that, too, all yeah. the time. Yeah. Uh, but uh, but Dick Donner directed a couple of that one Dead or Alive. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I, I worked really hard when I got into the business uh, to, to, to learn horses and cowboy stuff. And, and to, to, you know, I rodeoed. I, I, I was a bulldogger. I actually won Petaluma in 1980 mm -hmm. in steer wrestling. And... Uh, I was saying, you know, I, mean, I put a lot of time in on, on, I had a couple of horses and that were little fallen horses that we'd play with and stuff and, and learned how to drive and, uh, you know, had some really great times. And, uh, and, and at heart, I'm a cowboy and a Western guy, and, but uh, I don't dress like it. But, oh, and he switched to motorcycles now. But, no, I've always uh, been That's a whole, whole that's, other story. That's, that's always uh, been yeah. like, since I was five. Well, I, I appreciate you being yeah. here, Mick. It's great. really, really great. Thanks, Thank bro. you. I appreciate it.